Hello everybody and welcome to part six of the SketchUp series. In this video, we're gonna start adding a little bit of color and a few details to the table. Let's get going. So with this, this is where we're gonna start seeing a few limitations of the online free software because with the pro version, and I think you can with SketchUp Make as well, you can change the, you can slightly change the colors and the scale of the textures that we're going to apply to this. And even in some cases, the direction. So you can get the grain running like up the legs and along the draw sides and things. However, on this version, it doesn't look like that's possible. So this isn't gonna look brilliant when it's rendered, but it will be enough to sort of show you what's gonna be walnut, what's gonna be maple, for example. You don't need to get it bang on with something rough like this. In fact, in a lot of cases, I just leave it white, to be honest, because it makes it a little bit less noisy, should we say. All right, so here is our table. Obviously the drawer is all contained in there, all fully assembled, all as one component, and we've got the top back into position as well. So the first thing I do at this point, just to make it easier for myself, rather than painting each individual one of these pieces, I ask myself, what is this primarily going to be made from? And in this case, it's gonna be walnut. So we're going to go to the paint tool, click it on there, and then we're gonna press this little search button here. So then we can browse. We'll go down to wood and then let's find one. So that is probably the closest to walnut. I'm not entirely sure what the name is, but yeah, it's the brownest one. And in fact, what we're gonna do first actually is just highlight the entire table, press on that wood again, and then just go bang. And it will do the entire thing for us. So you can see here that this texture is quite pixelated. And the reason for that is I find that a lot of the textures here are scaled for like architectural applications. So they really stretch them out. For example, if I drew a massive rectangle next to this and I applied that texture to it, it would probably look a lot better. There we go. So you look at that, that kind of looks nice and, uh, and woody, but unfortunately for something small like this, you just don't really get that detail. So that's a great thing about SketchUp Pro and I think the Make version as well, in that you can scale that texture to make it a little bit smaller. You can rotate the texture to have it go this way or diagonally or, you know, there's all sorts of things you can do with it. I think you can even skew it in 3D space as well if you really wanted. But with this version, we are stuck as is, unfortunately. If we try and adjust them, firstly, you, um, you can't do it here for some reason. It doesn't let you edit it. You have to go to the Home thing which then includes all the textures that you've got included in the model. These ones are here as standard, but you can see we've got our wood one there. So you click on that, and then normally you would press this edit button, but make it look good. Da -da -da, upgrade, buy my stuff, which is slightly unfortunate. I don't know if there's a way of adding your own texture here. Again, on SketchUp Pro, I don't know if it's the same for Make, but with Pro, you can upload your own texture as well because here the choices in wood are quite limited. So I could get all sorts in there. I could get Zebrano, I could get Babinga if I wanted, and you can scale and rotate those to suit as well. Another thing that's hidden behind this edit button here is that you can slightly change the shade and the hue of the texture as well. So, so for example, if I wanted to make this look like American black walnut, you know, a really deep, rich brown color, I could edit that and I could change the shade of it to be a lot darker. And I could also change the hue to maybe add a little bit of like purple or red into it, which is what you commonly find in American black walnut. Similarly, I could change the hue of it into be more of a pinky red and maybe choose this texture here, for example, to be more of like a swirly pattern. Again, that's quite similar to what you would find on Babinga. So you could quite easily imply something is Babinga without actually getting a texture of Babinga in there. Anyway, so hopefully you can see there's some limitations of this free software. Now on the top, I think that looks a little bit plain at the moment. I want to add some sort of detail in the front and maybe a little bit of inlay as well. So a very simple way of doing this is going to be to edit the component. And let's get the offset tool and we're going to offset a border in from the edge. And I think, again, 30 millimeters probably looks about right. And let's offset another one from there, probably about two millimeters, I think, nice and thin. So then with this one, let's get our paint tool and we are going to find black for some ebony inlay. Now I don't tend to use like the blackest of blacks for this. I think it looks a bit too over the top. Quite often I'll go for this one or even this one uh, to imply sort of dark inlay, because as you can see, when it goes in there, it's, you know, it's pretty good as is. Something like this just kind of looks like a big abyss and kind of looks a bit over the top. So maybe this one in the middle will be best. And seeing as we're rather limited in choice, we have got <laughs> what looks to be OSB here. Oh, beautiful. 
and I think that's cork. Oh, wow. Oh, that's awful. Nope. Nope, we're not using that. Uh, this one, maybe? Flooring? No. Oh, I think it's going to have to be, uh, I think it's going to have to be OSB. What a shame. So there we go. From a distance, I guess you could imply that that was some sort of like maple burr or oak burr. It, it, it kind of looks like that from a distance and that's, that's all we've got with this software. Next, we go and do the draw sides. So let's pull the draw out of position so we can see it. And I think we're going to get a nice light material for this again. Now, when you do this, bear in mind that if you click on the side of the draw, remember that this draw is now all one component. So if we click on, let's say this one, it's going to do the whole thing because it thinks it's one component. What we need to do is do edit component and then color each one individually from there. We're going to do the base a slightly different color, I guess, to imply cedar or something like that. Maybe that one. It's quite nice. That one. Oh, uh, no. Ah, that looks quite good. So there we go. There's a nice old draw. Let's get that pushed back in. I'll tell you what we could do here. We could add a little handle to the front and we're going to make a turned handle. So how do you do that? Firstly, let's just get the center of that draw front. There we go. And we'll get our old circle tool. 15 millimeter diameter at the base, so 7.5 millimeter radius. And we'll just rub away these construction lines because we don't need them now. Then we're going to find the center of the circle. It should snap onto that. There we go. And how much do we want this to stick out? 25. Is that a bit too little? Well, let's go 25 to start with. Well, I think that might be a bit much, actually. Then what I tend to do is get a rectangle from that point and join it from here to the top of the circle. There we go. So effectively, what we want to do here is draw a cross section of the handle we want to put in here. And then we're going to use the follow me tool to follow it around the circle here to create the turned component. Now, this is often easier if you've got a physical existing handle to measure off, because trying to draw a cross section of a handle just using this is quite challenging. So I'm going to do my best. It probably won't look great, but, you know, we'll see. Go three up from there. Then I'm going to use the old arc tool. So maybe extend that out, I don't know, 10 millimeters or something. And then we can use the bulge from it to maybe go in two millimeters, something like that. Next, I'm going to do the end of the, uh, of the handle. So I'll probably do it at some sort of angle like that, perhaps. And then we'll add a curve onto that. Let it just work out where the face is. We can slightly adjust this with the move tool by snapping it into the center there. So I reckon something like that. Just look at this, that's going to be pretty shocking actually in terms of a cross section. <laughs> Let's move this out a little bit. Maybe a 2.5 millimeter bulge. Then we could just blend these in with the pen tool. When you do arcs with this software, it doesn't actually do like smooth arcs. It does it out of lots of little facets. And so it's quite easy to lock onto certain things if you need to. There we go, it's got a pink line there. So that means it's doing a extension of this line here. You can see it's just sort of going down. Uh, I don't want it to do an extension. I kind of want it to start blending in a bit more. So we'll maybe do it there. And then with this one, I can already see it's gonna be shocking. Let's get rid of all this rubbish, get rid of that line, get rid of all these, and we can get rid of these ones here as well. I feel like this could possibly be dragged back a bit, made a bit smaller. Maybe drag that back one millimeter and then get rid of this little bit on the end as well. There's something weird going on with this curve at the front and I don't like it. So I'm going to try and redraw it. I'm going to start there, maybe go up there. I think I could get a nicer blend with it that way. Oh, it had a blue lock there. There it is. So when it's blue, that quite often means that it's going to be the most sort of pleasing curve. I think that means that it's blended into that curve at the top quite nicely, but it doesn't want to let me do it because it's less than one millimeter bulge. Good. Thank you, SketchUp, for getting my hopes up and crushing them at the... L I'm sure we can work this out. Oh, goodness. Uh, all right, we'll go with it. That'll do. That'll do for a handle cross-section, at least. It's not going to look nice. Let's get the old follow me tool. And in three... Two, one, let's see how this looks. Follow me, follow me, follow me, follow me. There we go. Oh, okay, so it's done one of those buggy things. If I let go of this, it hasn't liked it whatsoever. Um, again, this does happen with the follow me tool every now and then. It's not particularly 
uh, smooth to use, should we say. Let's just try and redo it. Obviously, there's some sort of weird joins going on in this, meaning that it's, uh, it's not playing ball. Let's see if we can draw a line across it and fix some of them. There we go, so we fixed that one. Yeah, that's, um, that's, it's not bad. It doesn't look too bad, but I think we could obviously do a lot better. And so this is where the 3D warehouse comes into use. I wanted to show you that just for making like round handles and things like that. It tends to work a little bit better than what I've demonstrated here, but that's how you can use the follow me tool to create turned components. But in this case, I am going to delete that because it just looks shocking. And we are going to get the 3D warehouse, which I believe is this one here. And we are going to search a library of pre-made models for us to use to pretty up our design. So if we just type in handle, for example, let's see what we've got. Oh, look at this. And I'm liking the look of this at the moment, but the 3D warehouse is absolutely incredible. Like the things we're downloading here don't do it justice. For example, I could type in stadium and oh, wow. Let's see if we can break the design, shall we? Let's just download a whole stadium. <laughs> so <laughs> we now have a stadium and in here somewhere is my, um, <laughs> is my table. But as you'd probably expect, this very much slows down your computer when you're loading big things like this. I just wanted to show you the scale of some things that you can get in the 3D warehouse. It really is pretty incredible. For example, we could probably type in something as specific as Ferrari and people would have made Ferraris in SketchUp. That one's even got a cover on it, look, that's incredible. We could type in toilet and people would have made us a bunch of toilets just in case we wanted to, you know, render a bathroom or something like that. On the subject of toilets, I bet you could even just type in Mr. Hankey and someone would have made Mr. Hankey on it here. So yeah, there's all sorts of things that gets added to it and it is brilliant to use in applications like this where you're struggling to make something or you just wanna sort of add a few final touches to stuff. So let's get these handles. I like the look of them and it'll probably insert them all as one component. There we go. Let's just find the one we like the look of. There you go, that is basically what I was trying to create earlier. So what we can do is right click the component, press explode and that is gonna make them all individual. And let's take that one we like the look of. I'll just um, copy it for now. Let's delete the rest and then paste. And we are just left with that one handle. Get it somewhere in position. Again, if I give it some sort of uh, crosshairs to work with, then what we're gonna do is on the back of the handle, oh, it's hollow there. I guess that would be where a screw normally goes. We are going to draw a line across that just to make it a solid. And then we can get the move tool and get that placed centrally on our thing there. And there we go, we've got a handle attached to the front of the drawer. Looks a little large at the moment, I reckon. So let's see if we can scale it down a bit to get it more in proportion. Just a little bit though. So we've got the move tool here, and then within that you've got scale. And so when you scale it, there's all sorts of things you can do. You could scale it from the end here. We can kind of squish it in a bit like that. We could make it more oval shaped by squishing it in that way. Again, that might be something you wanna do for a handle. There are handles that look like that and they do look quite nice. Or you can do it diagonally like we're going to do here and that will do the entire thing uniformly. Unfortunately, in doing this, it has thrown it slightly off center in relation to the drawer. So we're gonna to have to realign that. Uh, but I reckon let's make it, it wasn't far off. Let's make it 0.8 compared to what it was before. Just sort of take a step back and see if that looks big enough. I reckon 0 0.8 is good. There we go. And let's give that a cheeky bit of color. And so with this, when I'm designing pieces, I tend to only use three colors. I've got one bold primary color. I've got a smaller secondary color. So in this case, the primary color would be walnut. The secondary color would be that uh, maple burr top. And then the tertiary color is that small detail inlay surrounding the maple burr on top, which is ebony black. So what we are going to do, I reckon, is make the handle black as well, because it's sort of an area of punctuation, which is the same as the inlay. And again, at this point, it's definitely worth not making it just jet black because you will lose all detail in the handle. Don't know why that's not working. I think what we're gonna need to do is open the component, highlight the whole thing, and then there we go. So yeah, look, if you make it completely jet black, there is just no detail in it whatsoever and it looks shocking. So we'll undo that. And instead, let's make it, let's make it this one. So again, still nice and dark, but you retain the detail in the handle then it looks quite nice. There we go. I would say that still looks 
a little bit chunky, but you know, I could scale that down another 0 0.7, 0 0.8 and get it even more in proportion, but you get the idea. That is pretty much the table complete. And so at this point, you can look at that and you know what materials you're gonna be using roughly, you know where the sort of colors are going, you know that all of your joinery is gonna fit nicely with the exception of these back legs where the tenons are intersecting with one another. Now, whether you choose to update this on the model is up to you or not, but for me, I would probably just keep it like that. And when it comes to making, I'll know that I've just got to add a small chamfer to the end of those tenons and be done with it. So we ain't got to really worry about it here, but if you're feeling particularly anal, go for it. And that is pretty much it. So we've only got one more thing to do with this, and that is going to be adding dimensions and talking a little bit about exporting if you plan to redraw this in CAD, which is what we're gonna be focusing on in the next video. As always, thank you very much for watching. If you found this video useful and you enjoyed watching it, please do not forget to press the like button below. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.